続きましてアントニオ・ビトリーノ国際移住機関事務局長による基調講演及び国際移住機関による活動紹介ビデオを上映いたします。Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a distinct honor and privilege for IOM again this year to be co hosting this annual international forum on acceptance of foreign nationals and their integration into Japan, together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. And to be able to do this together, despite the challenges presented by the continuing COVID 19 pandemic around the world. As mentioned by my distinguished colleague, Mrs. Takako Suzuki, State Minister of Foreign Affairs, this annual forum has been co organized by the Foreign Affairs Division of the Consular Affairs Bureau of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, in partnership with IOM, since 2005, to cultivate stronger understanding, acceptance, and integration of migrants. I would like to thank State Minister Mrs. Suzuki for giving me the opportunity to join this meeting today and discuss how we can ensure access to health care among foreign nationals in Japan, a topic that is extremely relevant domestically, regionally, and globally as we continue to na navigate the pandemic. On behalf of the International Organization for Migration, Today, I would like to share our global perspective on the healthcare access among migrants and mobile populations. In partnership with Japan and other member states, as the United Nations related agency responsible for migration, IOM remains committed to the effort to ensure healthy migration. We advocate for migrant inclusive health policies that focus on increasing health coverage. As well as ensuring equitable access to health care and promoting protection from financial risk. IAM also provides direct operational and technical support to member states to develop and implement such policies. The COVID 19 pandemic has had devastating effects on the global economy with a heavy toll of human life. Because of this, Many member states are now falling behind in implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including progress on access to basic services. In order to reinvigorate our efforts to attaining sustainable development and economic growth, we must become more resilient to emerging diseases and strengthen global health security without disrupting the movement of people across borders. These goals, at first glance, may seem to be contradictory, but they cannot be separated if they are to be achieved. These calls for stronger multi sectoral collaboration among member states in implementing the Global Compact for Migration, or GCM, to ensure that no one is left behind and produce stronger, more resilient health systems that respond to the needs of the people on the move. Distinguished participants, migrants have made and will continue to make significant contributions to the development of host communities. It has been evident throughout the COVID 19 pandemic that most developed countries depend heavily on foreign nationals who perform critical roles as physicians, nurses, and caregivers, as well as many other frontline workers in crucial sectors such as public transport. And other critical public services. And yet, many migrants are excluded from national health care systems and they face systematic obstacles when attempting to access essential health care services. For instance, a study conducted by IOM in 2021 highlighted the challenges faced by Vietnamese labor migrants in Japan and the Republic of Korea in assessing information and health care services. These challenges included language barriers, limited understanding about the healthcare system in Japan, and the benefits of health insurance, and limited knowledge about their eligibility for COVID 19 vaccination programming. Other factors included irregular migration status, discrimination, as well as a lack of migrant inclusive health policies and affordable health services.
Here we see a close intersection of universal health coverage with the post-2030 agenda and SDGs, as well as the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, the GCM. Universal health coverage will not be truly universal unless health services coverage and financial protection measures in all countries also include migrants, especially those marginalized or vulnerable. Achieving the universal health coverage that is inclusive of migrants will require more innovative evidence-based policies and more predictable financing mechanisms, which include more robust and sustained investment in primary health care with which to make it accessible for migrants. Achieving equitable, affordable, and universal access to adequate health care for migrants requires commitment from each country and also international cooperation. This is particularly pertinent as the pandemic has shown us without any doubt that a health threat anywhere is a health threat everywhere. Allow me therefore to commend the continuous efforts by the government of Japan, which has led by example and achieved universal health coverage within the country for all its legal residents, regardless of their nationality, with the introduction of its national health insurance system already back in 1961, which has provided the foundation for Japan's social and economic development. IOM also welcomes the commitment of the government of Japan to assisting developing countries through contributions to the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. As I address you today, the COVID-19 virus is still with us. Those who are vaccinated are beginning to return to normal life, but still too many people have limited access to vaccinations, particularly in developing countries. It is essential that migrants and the most vulnerable are included in vaccination programs, no matter their immigration status. IOM owns reporting from 180 countries, has found that as of December last year, 149, 83%, were in practice providing access to COVID-19 vaccinations to regular migrants. At the same time, irregular migrants were provided with access to COVID-19 vaccinations only in 84 countries. In the Asia and the Pacific region, out of 39 countries surveyed, 32 were providing access to COVID-19 vaccination to regular migrants, while only 17 countries, less than half, had so far provided access to migrants with irregular status. There is an urgent need to improve vaccine equity globally and ensure that migration status does not impede access. In this regard, I would like to express my appreciation to the government of Japan from its continuous efforts towards securing equitable access to vaccines, including through the COVAX facility, to respond to the needs of those most vulnerable in low-income countries and other parts of the world, in line with the objectives of universal health care. IOM is honored to have been partnering with the government of Japan in providing technical cooperation related to migrant health based on our vast knowledge and experiences from working across the globe. This includes, uh, for instance, uh, Japan's pre-entry tuberculosis screening program, which aims to reduce tuberculosis incidence by ensuring that those migrants who travel from high burden countries of tuberculosis can receive quality diagnostics and health care at pre-departure stages. These will not only benefit the migrants themselves and their own communities, but also the receiving communities in Japan. Let me conclude by reaffirming IOM's full commitment to working very closely with the government and people of Japan towards ensuring that no one is left behind in assessing universal health care. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted and confirmed a critical need for multi-sectoral, multilateral coordination and cooperation that integrates migrants and mobility regardless of their status. As the UN Secretary General has repeatedly noted during this pandemic, no one is safe until everyone is safe. And only once everyone is safe can we truly grow past this chapter in human history and flourish.
Thank you very much. Migration impacts us all. You may have a friend or neighbor who has migrated. Or perhaps you are a migrant yourself. People migrate to seek work and educational opportunities. While others do so to escape conflict and disasters, extreme poverty, and the adverse effects of climate change. Despite the impact of COVID-19 mobility restrictions, migration will continue to shape our world, providing benefits for our local, regional, and global communities. Since its establishment, IOM has evolved into the leading international organization dedicated to promoting safe, orderly, and regular migration, assisting those most vulnerable and harnessing the potential of human mobility. IOM's work covers fields such as return and reintegration, labor migration, climate change, migration health, border management, data and research, crisis response, and migration policy. The organization supports its member states to respond to the needs of migrants and improve migration governance amid conflict, political upheaval, natural disasters, and economic crises. In 2016, IOM joined the United Nations as a related agency, providing migrants with a much needed voice on the global stage. IOM is there to guarantee the safety, well-being, and dignity of people on the move, advocating for their human rights to be respected at all times. As nations develop new strategies to manage migration, IOM's dedicated staff are providing pragmatic policy recommendations and operational support for emergency and non-emergency situations in more than 100 countries. As IOM marks seven decades of service, a particular focus of his work is to mitigate the socio-economic impacts of COVID-19 and harness the energy and entrepreneurial spirit of migrants to reimagine human mobility. Looking into the future, IOM is committed to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and to achieving the objectives set by the Global Compact for Migration to reduce inequalities and ensure that no one is left behind. Learn more about IOM and its work at iom.int. ありがとうございました。